Today, three big housing nasties. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, that is post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian and New Zealand flavour. Now, over in New Zealand, ASB has just warned that house prices could drop 20% from their peaks when adjusted for inflation. As I discussed recently, according to the latest REINZ figures, the number of houses sold was down almost 30% in April compared to March, and the national median price dropped 1.7% over the same period and it was down about 5% nationally. Now, ASB's economists said that the three big housing nasties that they'd highlighted last year as potential risks of the housing market had all arrived at once, and they include tighter credit conditions, higher mortgage rates, and increased supply of new housing. They said that the bulk of the impact of rising mortgages was yet to be felt because it took about six months to filter through to prices. About 60% of mortgages are due to be reset in the next 12 months, including those on floating rates. Almost all would go on to significantly higher rates. They said it was the credit crunch of new responsible lending rules and tighter LVR restrictions that had tipped the housing market scales. While things could soon ease on that front, that would happen, of course, just as the mortgage rate pain hit. The large and rapid increases in mortgage rates over the second half of last year will be starting to fully impact the market around now, with the impact ramping up as the year goes on. This year's speed with which mortgage rates have risen among the fastest pace on record will pose big headwinds for house prices over the second half of this year, they said. ASB expects the biggest house price fall since the 1970s in real terms. In total, they expect a 12% peak to trough decline taking house prices back to where they were in early 2021, which is, by the way, still 27% higher than at the start of the pandemic. But when adjusted for inflation, that would be about 20%. That's the biggest drop since the 1970s. The biggest declines were picked to be in Auckland and Wellington. And ASB's economists said that while higher interest rates were unlikely to lead to widespread mortgage distress and forced sales, the rate shock could take money out of people's wallets this year. Much higher mortgage rates also changed the calculus for prospective new home buyers or for those looking to trade up. The test rates banks use to assess debt serviceability are where the rubber hits the road. These are rising fast in line with the broader market rate trends, and banks are now testing on rates north of 7%, up from an average of 6.3% in the middle of last year. And increases in supply of new houses will also help to depress prices, they said. We expect additional housing supply to come on the stream ahead, and we now are five years into a residential construction boom, and this supply bulge should increasingly show up in higher inventory and new listings numbers. This chimes, by the way, with an earlier report from Westpac, which expects New Zealand home prices to drop 15% from peak over the next two years. The bank's economists there said while they had correctly identified that house prices would fall as mortgage rates rose, those rates are now gone well beyond what they'd expected. House prices have been falling since the end of 2021 and at a fairly rapid pace compared to history, considering that any drop in prices at all is a rare occurrence. Higher mortgage rates, and in particular the sharp rise in fixed-term rates that began around September last year, are having the impact they expected on what buyers are willing to pay for a property. House prices to the end of March were down about 4.7%, they said. And Westpac's acting chief economist Michael Gordon said the bank had been consistent on its prediction of the official cash rate peak of 3% over the next couple of years. But by February, interest rate markets were already factoring that in, and by May they'd shifted to appear to expect a peak of more than 4%. Whether that's a genuinely held view about local economic conditions or whether we're just being dragged around by overseas markets is a moot point. The fact is that it's the market's interest rates that determine banks' funding costs and hence what they charge to borrowers, they said. And they said that while the market was overcooking it in terms of what was expected from the OCR, it was likely to continue to do so until given a reason to think otherwise. That reason will be a substantial drop in house prices 
making it something of a self-defeating prophecy, they said. And they said that the bank's economists still thought fixed-term mortgages were closer to the peak than the trough of this cycle, but shorter fixed terms in particular still had some way to rise. Initially, the bank had expected two-year rates to top out at just under 5%, but they were already beyond that. There is so much more tightening already baked into the market that even if the Reserve Bank did lift the OCR all the way to 4%, fixed-term mortgage rates won't need to move anywhere near as far, they said. But the higher interest rates would mean more price weakness, they said. Accordingly, we've revised our view of how far house prices will need to adjust to bring the market more into balance. We previously expected the 10% peak to drop fall in prices over this year and the next. We now expect the total drop of 15%. And we've also front-loaded the fall with 10% in 2022 and a further 5% in 2023. They said a 15% drop seems very large compared to history, but to put it in context, it will only take average prices back to where they were at the start of 2021. That just illustrates the ferocity of the rise in house prices during what turned out to be a brief period of super low interest rates. And the Westpac economist said, in the absence of distress sales, which were not expected to be a factor, property owners will generally not sell the loss if they did not have to. This means that some of the adjustment will come in in the form of lower turnover instead of lower prices. Now it's worth just reflecting here that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand has already signalled more deep price corrections than either Westpac or ASB are spelling out. So we'll see which is right. And I'd make the point that the three elements working together could well drag prices significantly lower than the economists at the banks are talking about. Now, of course, in a way they are talking their own book. They don't want prices to drop, of course, and therefore trying to give a shallow sense of how far they could drop makes sense to them. Economists, after all, are owned by the companies that actually employ them. But standing back, realistically, with cash rates going to continue to rise, they're already at 1.5% in New Zealand, it's clear to me that home prices are going to tip a lot faster and further than many think. And as I said, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand a little while ago was talking about at least a 20% adjustment from where we are. Could be worse. And there is always the prospect, you know, that we could get back towards where prices were before COVID. And that would be a very significant drop and put many people into negative equity and put many first-time buyers under intense financial strain. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough data to be able to model mortgage stress in New Zealand. I'm working on trying to get more data to do that. But it's clear to me that recent purchases of property in New Zealand with big mortgages, are highly exposed now and will be highly exposed later. Those three forces will, I think, turn into three of the four horses of the apocalypse. The fourth, of course, is forced sales and defaults. Watch for that too. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.